Hey everybody, Eagle Run 2-3 here. Um, as we're now in, you know, a couple of weeks into 2022, uh, I just, I kind of wanted to revise some of my opinions on inflation and what's happening um, with that. I think, I think originally I was pretty, I was pretty concerned about like what was going to happen with inflation and how like the Fed was going to how they were going to address that. But I, I think maybe some of my concerns are, I, I feel like they've maybe kind of changed a little bit, um, just kind of over, just as the holidays are over and now we're into 2022 here. I, I think I thought that inflation was going to run away right away. And it seems like we're going to get a bit of a slow burn here. And it kind of changes a little bit about like just my preparedness and what I'm thinking about and planning for um, in the future. So I just, I wanted to kind of talk about a couple of those things. And um, I've got this chisel here that needs, I dropped this, it fell off my bench and I chunked the corner out right there. So I might work on that here while we're talking. Um, the inflation numbers, you're seeing things from five to 7% up to 10 to 16%, even talks of a couple of things being 20%, 23%. That's pretty much the high of what I've seen. And it's not really about, you know, um, a, a bottle of mustard that, you know, costs $2 and then it's inflated because of inflation. And now this bottle of mustard is now $2.20. That's, that's not really, um, a lot of people probably don't even know how much mustard costs. And I just made up that number. So maybe I don't know what it costs either, but that's not really going to hurt anyone. 15 cents on a jug of mustard. It's not as if like you could make a case to say, wow, you should have bought a, a pallet of mustard. That way, you know, you can save that money. I don't, I don't think that is really applicable to us. And, and I also want to say, we're, we're going to talk about some money and some financing and investing type stuff in this video. And I don't want anyone to take any of my advice. I, I am an investor, but I'm not a professional investor. I am a small business owner. So I kind of have my hands in a lot of different things. And, um, yeah. So anyway, don't take my advice. We're just, this is a conversation and that's pretty much it. So for me, inflation doesn't really mean that that bottle of mustard is more expensive. What it really means is that if you make, you know, $60,000 a year, then you're actually getting a pay cut. So you could be getting a pay cut, depending on which number you're using of three to six grand a year, if everything is five to 8% more expensive. So it's really more about the big number in my opinion, because it lowers your purchasing power. And I know that's not really an interest, like, I know that's not really a foreign concept to most of us have a pretty good idea about what that looks like. But I think, I think looking at the larger aspect of it and maybe zooming out a little bit is where we're going to find some value and where we can decide to maybe focus, um, some attention. So let's use that 8% number and let's talk about, um, let's compare that like to a house. Because sometimes when you add a zero to these things, it makes it a little bit easier to understand. If we have a $120,000 house, but if inflation has hit the housing, um, like the bottle of mustard, then that's now $9,600 more expensive, uh, which would be $129,600, $130,000 for a $120,000 house. That may not be that big of a deal to you, but that's in that case, that's nearly 10 grand. Now let's, let's also talk about this mesmerizing $25 bar of soap. Um, I did not pay for this. This was given to me. Um, and I looked it up and I found out that it's a $25 bar of soap. I mean, it smells amazing. <laughs> I don't know if it sells $25 amazing, but, uh, I grew up using dial soap and I've got, uh, old spice soap here. This is available as an eight pack and it's $4 for an eight pack, which makes this bar of soap 50 cents. This bar of soap is $25. Um, other than the fact that it's a little bit larger, uh, you've got a five ounce bar versus a seven ounce bar. Other than that, these two both do a job to get you clean. Uh, this one smells okay. Um, this one smells amazing. It's called absolute mahogany. That's hilarious. Um, 
So anyway, I just, I, I don't know, this isn't like an inflation example. This is just living in a world where there's a $25 bar of soap is absolutely wild to me. Um, it makes no sense. I, I don't recommend anyone pays $25 for a bar of soap. If you get it as a gift, good for you. So I'm not saying that all soap is going to be $25. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just um, using this as an example to understand the price differences of something that is exactly the same. And that kind of leads us to um, to some silver here. Uh, I pulled a couple of pieces of silver here to kind of show you. These are all, is that a one ounce bar or is that a half ounce bar? That is a half ounce bar. And then we have two one ounce silver rounds. A lot of times when people talk about inflation, they immediately jump to silver and they say, well, and silver is a hedge against inflation. And that is um, old news. And I fully am on board with that. I think that silver is a great spot to rest whenever there is inflation. And silver prices right now are around $22, $23. You're going to have to pay you know, your premium in order to buy it. You can't just walk in with 23 bucks and buy an ounce of silver. But um, under $25 probably with, um, with, with your premiums. Uh, so if you're able to get some silver, I have been a silver um, saver, silver investor for probably dang near 10 years now. I buy it fairly regularly and I'm buying it, one, as an investment, but two, as a savings account. And on minor level, a hedge against inflation. When you look back, if you go to AP Mex and you look at the silver prices, you can see a 10-year, 5-year, 6-month, whatever chart you want to see. Um, silver prices, while they have fluctuated quite a bit, this isn't going to go down in value when there's inflation because I really do expect for um, investors, and I am actually looking at this myself, investors are flocking kind of out of the stock market and out of those like generic savings accounts um, into uh, crypto, which um, would be the digital version of gold and silver and into land. And the interesting thing here is there is both a virtual land and physical land that is available now because we live in a clown world where you can buy a piece of land, um, a virtual piece of land that doesn't really exist, but inside of a computer. Um, yeah, so you can, I think investors are going to be moving into those things. We're going to see the price of those go up. I don't think it'd be crazy to expect this um, in 2022 to go up a fair amount. I'm not really a price prediction channel, but um, some people that I read and, and trust and follow um, say it could double, uh, which is, I mean, that, you're looking at up to 50 bucks an ounce. So as an investment, that's a good idea. Um, as a hedge against uh, inflation, if you're putting your money in this and it gains a little bit of value, then uh, you're hedging yourself against that $6,000 pay cut uh, that you just took if you make 60 grand a year. One of the other things about silver, just as a side note, I, I actually just read this the other day, um, and I hope I have these numbers right. I, I tried to make a note here to and go back and look so that I could relay accurate information to you. Uh, the price uh, ratio between gold and silver, the price is about 70 or 80 to one. So you could take 80 pieces of silver and buy, or 80 ounces of silver and buy one ounce of gold. So the price is 80, 70, 70 or 80 to one. It's a little bit different based on premiums because the premium on silver is higher, but um, we'll leave that out for now for conversation purposes here. But the supply of silver and gold is actually more like eight to one. So gold is only eight times more rare than silver. So why is the price so different? Um, that's curious to me. There's a lot of conspiracies in the silver industry about whether or not silver is artificially suppressed. Um, I don't, I, I can't really spend any time on that. I, I just, it's just, it's so far out there. I just don't know what to do with it. Um, but nonetheless, I'm still buying silver and I think it's probably pretty smart, um, to buy silver. You have, you have to remember too, when we're talking about inflation and silver and investing, um, 10% of the world, if you're looking at the global side of this, 10% of the world still lives on like under $2 a day. Um, and I think if you, even if you take like 40 or 50%, it's still like five or $6 a day that the world is living on. Pretty, pretty crazy. From a long-term standpoint, I, I, I don't think that someone should go buy something because it's going to be more expensive later. And I maybe did allude to that um, in previous videos. So I'm kind of retracting that a little bit and I'm kind of changing my mind on, on that because uh, it just doesn't seem like that's a reasonable course to go.
So let's let's talk about what are some of the things on my radar and what are some threats or um, or or thoughts that I need to think through or you maybe need to think through. Uh, we are still. I know it's a new year and we're trying to forget about this stuff, but we are still slammed with supply chain issues. Um, I've mentioned I'm a small business owner. Um, I actually have two businesses. Both of them um, are are suffering from labor shortages or from uh, supply chain issues. That's definitely a very real thing. Uh, there's not really a conspiracy theory there. Uh, that coincides with um, with goods being available. It also coincides with labor, and then it also coincides uh, with weather. We're seeing crazy weather right now all across the country, and um, not not that it's not supposed to snow places. It's just uh, it slows things down, and and then of course the sickness that is that is just pervasive everywhere. Uh, you can't turn any direction and not find out something about it. Um, that is still very much out there and still very much on my radar as far as what I'm looking forward to and planning for in the future. Um, I am, I have some connections with some on the ground farmers and just based on, uh, my past, uh, I don't see those guys in my, in my regular life now, but I reached out to one of them and he told me some crazy differences in fertilizer prices. Uh, he's also mentioning how harvests are weird and different now. Um, either it's too wet or too dry. And uh, the fertilizer and the seed prices, he's looking at double prices on fertilizer and double prices on, on seeds. So when he's, what he's putting in the ground is costing him way more. And what he's treating his plants and, and crops with is way more. Um, and we still very much have inflation is on the radar. I know we're kind of downplaying that a little bit here in this video, um, but inflation is still very um, prevalent. And depending on what the Fed does, it will take us in a direction. And I don't like to be reliant upon someone else for my financial future. I'm sure you don't either, but um, it's that's that's the way it's going to be. Uh, and of course, there is some fuel shortages as well. Fuel prices are high. Um, that leads to high shipping costs. So I mentioned what investors are going to be doing. Um, and that's kind of some of the things that I'm going to be doing. Uh, I'm looking at um, some land and to see if I can find some deals on houses. I feel like housing prices peaked in 2021 and they're going to start coming back down. Um, I might try to pick up a rental property or two. Um, maybe try to VRBO something. Uh, those are things I'm working on. And then uh, keep, I'm going to keep buying silver. Um, I've never really bought much gold. I'm not, I, I felt like, I felt like um, as a preparedness-minded person, being able to trade an ounce of silver would be way more convenient or half ounce of silver um, if I was actually needing to trade this for something that my family needed uh, versus like shaving off some gold because um, it's just so much more valuable. I feel like the tangibility of this is just better and the the functionality of it is just better. Um, you can store a little bit more value in gold, but gold's like 1800 bucks an ounce right now. In closing, um, the top two things on my list. Um, number one is the political divide. I had, I got to see a bunch of family that I hadn't seen in a while over, um, over Christmas break. And it was interesting to have some conversations with them. The polarization of our politics is just toxic. Um, <laughs> it's no longer okay to just disagree with someone. I'm in my low forties and I remember, I'm not I'm like, I'm not that old. I remember that it wasn't that long ago where you could have a political conversation with someone and it didn't result in screaming and yelling and fighting and name calling. Uh, I don't know why we've just completely separated on, on political issues. Um, there's good people who I disagree with politically and I'm okay with that. Um, I saw, uh, I saw a, a little article and it had a clip to a video that was, um, to a video that was a, a, a TV ad. And it said at the top of the screen, if you support Joe Biden, don't call us. Um, they were saying, don't do business with us if you're a liberal. And well, I think that's funny and maybe there's some merit to that. Uh, I don't know that that's good for us long term. Um, but then again, I also don't know that there's any way to come back from this polarization. Uh, I don't like, if you can tell me a scenario where you feel like we can heal our political divide, I think that would be an interesting topic because uh, I don't see it. Um, I, and I don't know where that goes. Where does that lead to? Does that only lead to some sort of civil war? Um, gosh, I hope not. 
I hope not. And then the other part is uh, the sickness that is out there. It's it's like constant that you're just inundated with either numbers or stories. Um, and what we have right now is just not very scary. Um, but the people that are in power and are making decisions uh, very much enjoy that power. And they are taking full advantage of what... Um, of what that looks like in each individual aspect of your life, whether you have kids in school or you got kids, you know, taking classes somewhere or like whatever that scenario is for your job, um, employment, all those things. Like it's, there's, there's just no way to get around it. And I, I like to listen to, I like to listen to a couple podcasts. I'm a fan of Ben Shapiro. I like to listen to him. I don't, I don't agree with him on everything, but I just, I've quit listening recently because it's 100% about, who said this and who said what, all the gotcha politics, and it has to do with the stupid sickness. Um, that drives me crazy. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just over it. And in fact, I've actually upset some, I actually upset some people, including my wife, um, uh, at the school because I, I sent an, I sent a request and said, Hey, how do I unsubscribe to these close contact emails? Uh, that I'm getting from my children at school. It's like, I just literally don't, it doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't know. Is it the right idea to unsubscribe to those? I don't know. They didn't let me unsubscribe. Uh, they actually said there's no way to unsubscribe. So anyway, um, well, that's, that's, that's all I have about that. I'm going to, um, I'm going to sharpen up this, uh, chisel here and I'll let you guys go. Eagle run two, three. Thanks for watching.